Are you tired of this happening when you're playing The Last of Us Part 1? Are you confused as to the best way to make it through this game? Well, fear not, because I've got some tips for you that have been rebuilt from the ground up for the PS5 version of this game. Dr. Poop Love here, and today I want to give you 12 tips to endure and survive The Last of Us Part 1. And stick around to the end because my last tip is going to help you deal with those pesky clickers when they are hot on your ass. But let's get into it. And my first tip for you is to loot everything and everywhere. And I mean everywhere. That's not the confessional booth, that's my room. All right, I'm not touching anything. Basically, I want you to become a hoarder. Hey! what I say to you when we walk down the steps? what I say? I'm just fixing your stupid pile. Don't touch. The more supplies you have, the better chance you have at surviving upcoming encounters, and the more options you have at your disposal to deal with the given scenario. Even when an enemy is beyond that door. The reward is often worth the risk. Open every drawer, unlock every safe, and turn around and double back after wiping enemies out of an area to see if there's anything extra lying around. Let's move on to the next tip, and that is for you to save the bulk of your resources for the hardest sections, like the bloater sections. By getting to these hard sections with a good bit of resources, you're gonna have a much easier time. My best advice to do this is to try your best to stealth through the sections so that you can pick off enemies mostly with your bare hands instead of using precious ammo and throwables. Some sections you can totally stealth through without even killing anyone, and this can be a great way to build up your arsenal for these harder sections. Next, you need to be smart with the way you upgrade. If you successfully looted everywhere, you should be able to have pills and gear to put into your upgrades. For supplement upgrades, it may depend on your playstyle which one is best, but the healing section is probably a good bet. Faster heals can be good for healing quicker when engaged in combat and you're about to die, but you're almost through the encounter. But max health gives you more health to work with. So that may actually be the best, especially if you're having a hard time getting through sections without taking damage. I definitely feel that you should avoid the faster crafting speed because I don't really think it's that necessary. Instead, you should try to craft as much items before each encounter so that you don't have to worry about crafting on the fly. Now, as far as gear goes, I think the best way to go first is to go for the additional long arm holster. And I even went as far as to skip the very first workbench to make sure I had the parts for this upgrade, which is available in the Billstown Church after you get your first toolbox upgrade. By doing this, you can now switch between two long arms much quicker. And so you essentially have more ammo to work with at a faster pace. Having to switch mid fight can really suck. And that's also why adding a second short weapon holster is my number two. From there, I like to get my bow draw speed up and go for additional clip capacity on my hunting rifle, both allowing me to get more shots off faster. And I also recommend deprioritizing upgrading the shotgun as it's pretty good as is compared to most of the other guns, which need a little bit more juice but clip capacity on the shotgun is helpful too. Moving on to tip number five, that is to make every shot count. Yeah, not a lot of ammo. You make your shots count. Make every shot count now. I get into trouble down there. You make every shot count. Yeah. This is actually great advice, but yeah, take your shots with care. Go for headshots if you can to save on ammo, and basically, remember, this is not Call of Duty. Every missed shot can have brutal consequences, especially on the harder modes. So take your time with your shots and make sure that you're on target before pulling that trigger. My next tip for you is to collect shivs and don't use them if you can help it. Rather, save them for the shiv doors. The rewards behind these doors are immense and yeah, you will need these, especially to build up your arsenal for those harder sections of the game. Now I wanna give you some bow pointers because this can be a frustrating weapon, but it's also a very important stealth tool. One thing to know is that the default reticle is kinda of poop 
and while the range farter while the range finder reticle is a bit better you can and probably should go with the classic reticle style this style tells you exactly where your arrow is going to land and that can really save you from losing arrows missing everywhere additionally with this weapon make sure that you lead your shots on moving targets because there is this thing called travel time when you fire the bow it takes some time for the arrow to travel to the target and so if your reticle is on target and the target's moving they may be long gone by the time your arrow gets there the faster they're moving the more you need to lead your shots also go for headshots if you can this gives you the best chance of actually getting your arrows back. It's not foolproof, but you lose much more going for body shots, and a single arrow to the head is also less arrows lost. Tip number 10 is to run around. When you're in a pinch, don't be afraid to just run away to reset your position or escape the area, especially when you're surrounded. It's a better strategy to run away to where you know your flank is safe. You can even bottleneck them so that you end up taking on less at a time. And you can also run in circles and let your buddy do a lot of the work. And also, don't be afraid to use your buddies as bait. You are just surviving after all. Okay, now for some clicker tips because these guys are not fun to deal with. And probably the best thing you can do is simply avoid them if you can. Stealth right past them and leave them be. And one super easy hack to do that is to hold an object or aim a gun and walk with the stick fully deflected. This pretty much puts you at the perfect speed to walk by without them hearing you. And by having an item equipped, you can always utilize it if you do get too close. Of course, avoiding clickers is not always possible, but here are a few ways to deal with them. Firstly, as a means to save a shiv and a melee weapon, you can use a brick, which does this quick three punch takedown on clickers. Bottles, on the other hand, uh, yeah, they can't do that, but Joel can do this cool flip with them. But also with bricks and bottles, they can be used to quick throw, which auto aims and stuns the clicker. And when you do this, they pause in this position for a good long while. And this can give you a great window to get a few relatively easy headshots in. Also note that if you get an initial headshot with a weapon, it also puts clickers into this mode. So you can use that as a strategy as well. And of course, when I've exhausted all these options and as a way to still hold on to that sacred shiv, I like to save a modded melee weapon as a last resort for any clickers that get too close. Of course, though, it's one thing to know these tips, but it's another to see them in practice and incorporate them in your playthrough. So if you want to see me using, well, I'll say most of these tips with success, you should check out my Last of Us Part 1 playthrough. But Otherwise, so long, pooper troopers.